I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in my distress, I will hear them and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration this day of the Lord, the day of obligation when we gather together as God's family to worship him, to praise him, and to thank him for the many blessings he has bestowed on each one of us for the past week. As we too pray and ask him for his support and graces for the new week that we are beginning. The word of God today encourages us to people who are gentle in the way how we approach our affairs here on earth. Jesus is inviting us to be humble like little children, for it is for such that the kingdom of God is made. We want to pray for the grace of God in this Mass that um, it may be abandoned in our lives to help us approach things in a manner that pleases to God and especially that we may be able to embrace the virtue of humility and peace, virtues of humility and peacemaking that the Word of God today encourages us uh, to consider. This Mass has been requested by Mr. and Mrs. Kariuki, and it is in order to thank God on their wedding anniversary. This, together with other intentions that each one of us has, we want to present to them to the Lord, we want to, pre to place them on the altar of sacrifice as we begin this Mass, and ask Jesus, the High Priest, to receive them and to present them to the Father on our behalf and for us. In order that uh, our encounter with God in this Eucharist, in his word and in the breaking of the bread may be a fruitful one, let us acknowledge our sinfulness, realize that we approach the altar of God as human beings with our weaknesses and shortcomings and so ask God to forgive us so that we may worthily be able to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the book of wisdom. And godly men said, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins and accuses us and accuses us of sins against our training. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's son, will help him, and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, that we may find out how gentle he is and make a trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. The word of the Lord. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life, is the upholder of my life. See, 
I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name for it is good. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and vile and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, without uncertainty or insincerity. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes wars and what causes fightings among you? Is it not your passions that are at war in your members. You desire and do not have, so you kill. And you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord.
At that time, Jesus and his disciples went on from the mountain and passed through Galilee. And he would not have anyone know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he saw in the, when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you discussing on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they, on the way they had discussed with one another who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me rece receives not me, but him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the reflection on our readings of today being the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. The theme of my reflection is taken from the second reading we've just had from the letter of St. James, the causes of fights and quarrels among us. Conflict and tussle over power are common phenomena in human societies. There is a lot of conflict in this world as we know. I don't just mean wars, terrorism, or even violence, although they often seem the the worst and most extreme conflicts. I also include the daily conflicts that we are part of at our workplaces, at schools and our institutions of learning, in our families, in our communities, and even uh, in the church. Small arguments, little disagreements, frustrations that other people don't quite see the world as we see it. Tiny fights we need to win each day to succeed in our work. We need to succeed in, uh, in games and everything. There are two psychologists, at Bell and uh, Bret Hart, who made the following conclusion that people will fight because of distribution of resources, conflicting goals, conflicting roles, different personal values, different opinions, perceptions, or points of view. There are many other reasons why people conflict, attacking and destroying one another. The Apostle James says in the reading today, jealousy and selfish ambition are the twin reasons for conflicts between people. He says, you desire and you do not have, so you kill. 
you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and wage war. Jealousy and selfish ambitions certainly breed disharmony, ill will, and wickedness. In every conflict and war, there are instigators and plotters. The Book of Wisdom narrates an evil plot by a group of wicked people to attack a just man, not because he has done harm to anyone, but simply because of his lifestyle is different and they are unhappy that he challenges them with the truth. They plan, therefore, to torture, to persecute, and to launch an unprovoked attack against him. They want to test the extent of his patience and gentleness. That's was what we had in the first reading. There is something, dear brothers and sisters, about being human that uh, drives us to succeed, to want to achieve things, sometimes at all cost. For some people, they target greatness, earthly greatness, social recognition. For others, they look at um, uh, recognition that is given by men. Ambition, drive, success, and influence are themes of our readings today, especially the first and the second, but also the gospel has something to say about that. Yet the teaching of Christ today seems to contradict all this. If anyone wants to be first, they must make themselves last of all. In today's gospel, Jesus openly rebukes the disciples who displayed their raw ambitions for power, greatness, and glory when they began a heated argument among themselves about who was the greatest. This argument started after Jesus predicted what was going to happen to him. Could it have been that they thought that this man is now going? He said that he's going to be killed, to, to be out of this world. He has been our leader. And now we have to start now discussing who is going to take over. He told them, the son of man will be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after the three days, he will rise. So his disciples failed to pay careful attention to what Jesus was saying to them. On the contrary, they were so absorbed with who was the first and greatest among them. Who was to take over leadership after Jesus is no longer with them? Judas must have said, I am the greatest because I control the treasury. I have the checkbook. Peter would have argued that he has been called the rock on which the church is to be built. John would say, after all, I am the beloved disciple, and therefore I am the greatest. James and John would say they were the greatest because they were cousins of Jesus. Each one of them, the 12 disciples, had a reason to think that he was the greatest of all. And their argument was becoming messy and turning into a fight. And Jesus listened carefully to their conversations, but he did not interrupt them until they came inside the house. Maybe he didn't want to cause commotion on the way for people to wonder why, eh, why are they uh, uh, you know, uh, discussing. He began to ask them 
what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. Their silence could mean that at this point they realized how useless their argument was and had become remorseful. They must have become shameful, ashamed of their action, realizing that Jesus noticed what they were discussing and about what they were uh, arguing. Jesus, in his usual way of turning a negative situation in a positive one, he used this opportunity to educate them about the meaning of true greatness. And he shocked them with a new teaching when he said, if anyone wishes to be the first, he shall be the last, the, the last of all and the servant of all. According to Jesus, the greatest is the one who serves. Greatness is to be found in humbling oneself and being at the service of others. It is the one who is humble enough to receive a child, which is to say, and one who is gentle and tender with the weakest people in the society. The world tell, tells us to be assertive and aggressive in seeking greatness and glory. But Jesus teaches us, as he taught his disciples then, to be gentle and not to fight for power, money, or become slaves of our inordinate ambitions. Look at how, on several occasions and in his lifestyle, Jesus preached the gospel of gentleness, how he cared for the sick, sinners, and weak people. With all the gentleness and tenderness that encouraged them to rise above their weakness, and in his gentleness, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, and opened the eyes of the blind. In his gentleness, Jesus was obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And therefore, he confidently says, learn from me, for I am humble and gentle in heart. In the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, Jesus says, blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. He also admonishes his followers to be as gentle as doves. If anyone wishes to be the first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Our society tells us that being right, being first, and being the best is all important. But society is wrong. Jesus calls to be gentle humble and at the service of others. He teaches us not to put ourselves first, but to put others first. He wants to be like us to be like, like little children who are humble, obedient, and loving, and full of hope. Only then shall we prove to be his true disciples. Let us pray friends, for the grace of God to help us resist the urge to be the first or better than others, for it is from such attitude, and, uh, attitude that conflicts arise, but instead we may be able to embrace the virtues of humility and peacemaking as Christ himself. May we become peacemakers May we become instruments and real agents of peace wherever we find ourselves so that God may be glorified in our actions. Amen.
after listening to the word of God, may we arise so that we may ascend to it through the profession of our faith. I believe in one God. Christ, our Lord, predicted his saving death and resurrection. Through him, the suffering servant, let us bring our petitions to the Father of all mercies. For our Pope, who is the servant of the servants of God, let us pray to the Lord. for peace and harmony between those nations set against one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to jealousy and destructive competition among members of our families, let us pray to the Lord. For Christians working for the welfare and protection of children in our community, let us pray to the Lord. We pray also for our sick, bereaved, for our special projects or events, let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. And we offer the prayer of Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you God entrusted his only son. In you Mary placed our trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord gracious. All of us may embrace virtues of gentleness, humility, and service. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, these are some of our prayers, our petitions that we present to you this morning. We know that you know us. You know what we need most to be your beloved children. We ask you to grant all this to us through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Let us continue to pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the, of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in, the, in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered them covenants, and through the prophets, you taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. 
to accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may this Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these gifts, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, he blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we now celebrate the memory of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your whole loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice especially your servant, Pope Francis, David Kamau, our apostolic administrator, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, religious men and women, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you this morning, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all who, the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. with in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In a world engulfed by war and conflict, peace is very important. Peace as a gift from God, the greatest gift that Jesus gave to the world, to the church, to his disciples, and the one he's giving us today, and especially those of us who experience conflict in our places of work, in our communities, in our families. We therefore pray for this special gift of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Let us offer each other this peace of Christ. Behold Christ Jesus, our Lord and Master, 
who is inviting us to be instruments and agents of peace, to embrace humility, gentleness, and service. Is the Lamb of God is the one who takes away the sins of the world, and happy are we who are invited to his banquet. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Prayer before communion. Oh, oh my God. I Then in the Holy Eucharist, I confess that I'm a poor sinner and I'm not worthy to receive you, but you just say a word and I shall be healed, and then I can receive you into my soul. I am sorry for all my sins because they have offended you, and I resolve never to commit them again. Have mercy and forgive me, Lord. I desire to receive you with my whole heart. Come into my poor soul and make your heart a God. Amen. To my soul.
after communion soul of Christ sanctify me body of Christ save me blood of Christ run through my veins water flowing from the side of Christ wash me passion of Christ strengthen me oh good Jesus hear me within your wounds hide me let me not be separated from you from the evil enemy defend me at the hour of my death call me and bid me to come to you that it the sense I may praise you for all eternity. Amen.
You have held, you have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. O oh Lord, may my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O oh Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. May we be seated for the announcement. The announcements of the 19th uh, September 2021, 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, A.B. Coming Saturday, 25th September 2021, the, the tw uh, 12th brothers, our spiritual brothers, will be ordained deacons here in our parish. These are brothers who assist various groups in our parish in pastoral work. In order to prepare, for, to prepare a gift for them, the PPC members would like that we as a parish appreciate them with a gift. 
And by the way of giving them that gift, we shall have a second collection in all masses today. Please be generous. You can also give your contribution through the office. In conclusion of the stay of St. Joseph's statue in our parish, there will be a half-day retreat with the theme, Walking in the Footsteps of St. Joseph. It will be on Saturday, 2nd October, 2021, here in the parish. And the retreat will begin at 8.30 a.m. and will conclude with a consecration mass at 1 p.m., in which the participants will be consecrated to St. Joseph. We encourage all parishioners to take advantage of this special event. St. Cecilia Small Christian Community will have their meeting today at the Shrine of the Sacred Heart of Jesus at 3 p.m. Upendo Choir will have its monthly meeting today after the second mass. CWA and CMA will have their monthly meetings coming Sunday, 26th September, after the second mass. CMA group are inviting all men over, over 18 years who are willing to join CMA group to join them in their meeting in the parish hall, room number five. There will be adoration of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist coming Sunday, 26th September, starting at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., and thereafter, Sunday evening Mass. Our parish new hymnal is on sale at the table outside the church. Please buy yourself a copy at 1,500 Kenya shillings. All those who have not collected their Huduma number cards are kindly requested to check from the Langata Sub-County Assistance Chief's Office. We thank all who animated Mass last Sunday. May God bless you. Mass animations coming Sunday, 26th September, are as follows. 7 a.m. First Mass Families. 9 a.m. CWA. 11 a.m. St. Clair. 5 p.m. Finance Council and PPC Executive. May you have a blessed Sunday.
Thank you very much, all those who have animated this mass. Uh, thank you, choir. Thank you, the families, first mass families who have animated in the mass. Thank you for all for coming. Thank you for the second collection. And as um, you've heard, uh, our 12 spirit and brothers will be ordained uh, deacons next Saturday on the 25th year, starting from 10 a.m. So those parishioners who um, uh, are chanced, have time, you're most welcome uh, so that we can support these our brothers as they shall be uh, receiving this important ministry uh, in the church. This is the last ministry uh, before ordination to priesthood, and some of them, after they have been ordained, will be serving us here as deacons. So the parishioners are welcome uh, to come and witness to, uh, to that uh, event uh, on Saturday that will be presided of, over by our apostolic administrator, Bishop David Kamau. May we arise and, prophet, uh, and conclude our Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has come to an end. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I wish you a blessed Sunday and a happy week ahead. Thank you.